All right, so we're in, uh, we're in the second section of chapter two. We're in 2.2, and we're going to talk about polynomials with higher degrees, polynomial functions with higher degrees. Um, and the first thing we want to look at is, is, um, is what, if we have a polynomial function, just some general ideas of what, what it's going to look like, what, how, how it behaves. So polynomials always are going to have certain, um, certain special, special properties. The first one, and this is really important, one reason why we spend so much time working with polynomials, is polynomials are what we call uh, continuous. And what that means is they're, they're smooth, no breaks, no jumps, no holes. So whenever we have a polynomial function, we know that it's going to be smooth. We know it's not going to have any holes. We know it's not going to have any jumps. So that's, that's one reason why they're, they're uh, nice. And their turns, if they turn, so when they, when they change direction, they change direction smoothly. And that means when, when it goes from, from increasing to decreasing, it doesn't do it at a sharp corner. It does it at a nice, a nice smooth curve. So these are a couple of reasons why, why polynomials are interesting, because these properties make them easier to work with. Functions that aren't continuous, that aren't smooth, um, we have to be more careful with. The first kind that we want to look at just briefly is what we call a, a power function. And we've talked about a, a few kinds of power functions already. A f power function is going to be f of x equals x to the n, where n is, um, is our exponent. So this is a power function. y equals x squared is a power function. Power functions have, have some, some interesting some interesting properties, and it, it helps to uh, helps to have a general idea of what they look like. So, we have two possibilities: for n, e n is even, and n is odd. They look slightly different depending on whether n is even or n is odd. So we know that y equals x squared gives us a nice parabola. Anytime we have an x to the an even exponent our function is going to look sort of like a parabola. So let's look at some power functions here. What I've done here is graph some, <coughs> whoops, sorry, graph some power functions. So in black here, we have f of x equals x squared. We've been working with the parabola um, a lot. In red, we have g of x equals x to the fourth. Notice it looks kind of the same, but it flattens out more close to the origin. And um, in blue, we have g, h of x equals x to the sixth. So again, similar to a parabola, but it's a little flatter around the, around the vertex. And finally, I've graphed x to the eighth in green. So similar shape, but flatter near the origin. So they all have a similar shape. So these are our, um, our power functions for even exponents. And for odd exponents, in black is x to the third. And we've talked about f of x equals x to the third a little bit. And then I've graphed the, the other odd powers, 5, 7, and 9. Similar shape, but they flatten out near the origin. So the purpose, the idea here is that, that we want to be somewhat familiar with the shapes of these functions, have kind of a rough idea of what they're going to look like. And notice that our odd function 
goes down on one side, goes up on the other, where even functions uh, went the same direction on either side of 0, 0. Odd functions go the opposite direction on either side of 0, 0. And we're going to talk about that in, in just a minute. So let's go back to our, back to our sheet here. Um, transformations of power functions are just like our transformations for y equals x squared. If I, if I shift, if I shift the, the vertex, the transformations look exactly the same. So if we, if we add a number out here, that's going to shift our graph up and down. If I add a number inside the function, if I have x minus 2 to some power, that's going to shift my function to the right. If I multiply a number out front, that's going to stretch or compress my function uh, horizontally. So transformations of power functions are exactly like transformations of uh, y equals x squared, the exact, the exact same thing. So if you have a problem where it asks you to sketch the graph of uh, x to the third uh, translated three units to the right and four units up, you would know how to write that because it's exactly the same as we've done with, with um, parabolas. Now one thing that we're interested in with polynomials is what happens when x is very large or x is very small. And in those cases what we're talking about is is end behavior. And what end behavior means is when x is very large, x goes towards positive infinity, or x is very small, x is going to minus infinity. So we want to know what, what, a, what a polynomial does when x is large and x is small. Well, if we, if we look at our graphs of our power functions, we see that eventually, for these, for these particular ones, that as x gets very large, these keep increasing, 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 increasing. And that's not going to change. As x gets smaller and smaller, goes towards negative infinity, these get smaller, 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 smaller. And for our even powers, if x is very large or if x is very small, they increase on either, on either, side, of, on either side of our axis. So it keeps going up and up and up, keeps going up and up and up. So we, we're interested if we have some general kind of polynomial, not just a, a power function, if we have some other terms added here. What happens, what happens at the end? So we have, a couple of, we have a couple of possibilities, and we use what we call the leading coefficient test. <coughs> the leading coefficient tells us what's going to happen with our, with our functions as x gets larger, small. So we're looking at we're looking at a polynomial, and our leading coefficient is just the number that's in front of the highest power of our variable. That's our leading coefficient. So we're looking at the term with the highest power on the variable, so the term with the biggest exponent. That's what we mean by our leading coefficient. So if we have some polynomial f of x equals, and the way we wrote it the other day is a sub n, x sub n, plus a sub n minus 1, x sub n minus 1, and we go out, we keep adding terms. Finally, we have uh, a sub, we just have a x plus a 0. So we have, we have all these terms added together. All we're looking at is the highest power of x. This is our leading coefficient. And our 
our leading coefficient is our the number in front of the in front of our power of x. So our leading coefficient is a sub n. And we have we have a couple of possibilities. And I'm going to just draw a little chart. Two possibilities. N is even or n is odd. And our functions behave a little differently depending on whether n is even or n is odd. So our <coughs> our function so I have f of x and I'm just looking at the leading coefficient a sub n x to the n and I'm adding more but I'm only interested in this one um, if a is positive and a is negative. So I'm going to draw a little chart here. <coughs> um, so for the first row, n is even. If a sub n is positive, my n behavior, the ends of my functions on either side of the axis, it's going to go up on both sides. If a is negative, my leading coefficient is negative, eventually, as x gets very large or x gets very small, my n behavior my function is going to decrease on either sides of the axis. So this is like this is what we looked at on our on our <coughs> graphs our for our even power functions they went higher and higher and higher on either side of the axis. If a sub n is negative if our leading coefficient is negative that flips our graph over and eventually our function is going to decrease, decrease, decrease on either side. And our second possibility is for n is odd. If a sub n is positive, our leading coefficient is positive. On the left, our function is going to decrease. And on the right, our function is going to increase. If a sub n is negative, we have the opposite. On the left, it's going to increase. On the right, it's going to decrease. I'm just going to move this over. So our leading coefficient is negative. It flips, flips our graph over. And our function increases on the left and decreases on the right. So this is like our odd powered functions that we look like, our odd power functions. Um, the ones we graphed, our, our leading coefficient was positive. It was just 1. And the function got smaller and smaller and smaller on the right and bigger and bigger and bigger on the left. Um, and if we flip it over, if our leading coefficient is negative, then our graph, our function is going to increase on the left and decrease on the right. Might do some other stuff in between here, but eventually this is what it's going to do. That's why we call it the end behavior. Questions on that part? So figuring out the end behavior for a, po for a polynomial is really easy. All we have to do is look at the, the number in front of the highest power of x. So let's look at a couple of examples. Um, we want to know the end behavior. Uh, the, the other way it's described is right hand and left hand behavior. Um, so right hand, left hand behavior, end behavior mean the same thing. So let's look at um, f of x equals um, minus x to the fourth plus 7x to the third minus 14x minus 9. And we want to describe Describe the end behavior. So what is this function? What, 
what is this function going to look like eventually? What is go what's it going to do on the very left-hand side of the graph and on the very right-hand side of the graph? So for this function, what's my highest power of x? Which term? This x to the fourth is the one we're looking at. And uh, n is even. For this one, n equals 4. And is my leading coefficient positive or negative? Positive. Negative. This, this minus sign looks like a minus 1 sitting out there. So a sub n, leading coefficient, is negative 1. So our, our leading coefficient is negative. So eventually, which direction is my graph going to go? On the left-hand side? Down. And on the right-hand side, down. So eventually, my, my end behavior, my right and left-hand behavior, is going to be down on both sides. It might do a bunch of other stuff in between, but we're only interested in what it does with these types of problems. We're only interested in what it does on either side at the very ends. How about... Um, how about f of x equals uh, 2x to the third minus 14x squared plus 5x to the fifth plus 6. And we want to know the end behavior. Which, which term are we interested in? Are we the biggest, the one with the biggest exponent. So we're interested in this term. So n is n is five. So n is odd. And a sub n is also five. And it's positive. So on the for this for this function. What is it going to do eventually on the left? Down. And on the right? Up. It could do a lot of things in between, but eventually it's going on the left hand side, it's going to just keep decreasing, and on the right hand side, it's going to keep increasing. So this is what we're interested in when we're describing describing the end behavior or the left, right, and left-hand side behavior. The behavior as x goes to infinity and negative infinity, all of those mean the same thing. When x is really large or really small, what is our function eventually going to do? Everybody good with that? OK. Um, and what we're trying to do is kind of build a vocabulary, build, build a, a, a a way to visualize what functions look like, know how they're going to behave without having to graph them, without having to start plugging in numbers. Just by looking at them, we can get a general idea of what, what our function looks like. Um, this next little bit is, is kind of a reminder. We talked about it the other day. Um, So the zeros of polynomials. The reminder is that all of these things that, I, that I'm going to write, write down here, all of them mean exactly the same thing. These, are, these all mean the same thing. So f is a polynomial. We're saying our function is a polynomial. So we have to write them down, so same thing. Um, you don't have to write them down, but I want you to remember. It's, it's kind of like translating. They will say different things, but they, we're, we're asking you to do the same thing. So f is a polynomial. a is, is a number. All of these are the same thing. x equals a is a 0 of f. That means the same thing as saying 
x, e uh, x equals a is a solution of f of x equals 0. That means the same thing as x minus a is a factor of f of x. And that also means the same thing as a 0 is an x-intercept. of the graph all four of these things mean exactly the same thing so when a problem tells you that it wants you to find a zero it's the same thing as finding a solution that's the same thing as an x-intercept of the graph. And that's also the same thing as saying that, that x minus a is a factor of my function. If we think about solving quadratic equations by factoring, x minus a is a factor is the same as saying that a is a solution because we say x minus a equals 0 and x equals a. So all four of these things mean exactly the same thing. So moving forward, we want to be able to translate back and forth between any of these, knowing that they mean the same thing. Now in this, in this particular section, the types of problems that, they're going to, that you might see that have these kinds of things is it will say, write, just as a quick example, write a polynomial. with x equals 3, 4, and 5 as solutions. So the problem might ask you to, to, to write, write a polynomial, and you know that these are so the solutions. So this is where you need to know that these things all mean the same thing. 3, 4, and 5 are solutions, means that 3, 4, and 5 are a 0 of f. It means that 3, 4, and 5 are x-intercepts of the graph. But this is the key for a problem like this. We know that x minus a is a factor. So one polynomial that I could write that has 3, 4, and 5 are solutions, I could say f of x equals x minus 3 times x minus 4 times x minus 5. We know that 3, 4, and 5 are solutions. So x minus 3, x minus 4, and x minus 5 are factors of my function. So this would be my function. I could multiply all of this out, and I would have a third degree polynomial. So that's, that's, what, this is, that's what this is telling us. If we had a polynomial written, written like written like this, x minus 3 times x minus 4 times x minus 5, we would know that x equals 3 is a solution, x equals 4 is a solution, x equals 5 is a solution, that 3, 4, and 5 are intercepts, or 3, 4, and 5 are zeros of f. So we're just, it's just a way of translating back and forth between uh, different ways of talking about our functions. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. All right, so let's look at an example using these ideas. And we'll we look at a couple of examples using, using all of our ideas. And then, we'll, um, and then we'll be done for today. So an example. Let's say we want to find the x-intercepts. of f of x equals x to the third 
minus x squared minus x minus 1. Sorry, plus 1. So find the x-intercepts. What's another way that we could say we want to find the x-intercepts? What are we doing with this function? How do we go about finding x-intercepts? Elena says set y equals 0. We're so we're finding a solution. We're finding the zeros. So x-intercepts are when f of x equals 0. That's where my intercepts, my x-intercepts are. So we set f of x equal to 0. So I have x to the third minus x squared minus x plus 1 equals 0. So we want to solve this. This one's, this one's a little tricky to solve. So what I'm going to do, if you, if you remember, if you remember your, your cubic uh, factoring, you'd be able to write it down right away. If not, we have to go through a little more work. I'm going to look at these two terms, and I'm, just, I'm going to factor out an x squared. So I'm going to rewrite that as x squared times x minus 1. And I'm going to write this one. I'm going to factor out a negative 1 out of this. So I'm going to write this as minus x minus 1. If I, if I distributed my x squared here, I would get this part. If I distributed my negative 1 here, I would get minus x minus 1. And that equals 0. Anybody see, see where we go next with this? What's common to both terms? x minus 1 is common to both terms. So I can factor that out. So I'm going to write this as x minus 1 times x squared minus 1. And that equals 0. So I just factored x minus 1 out of each term. I have an x squared in this term, and I have a minus 1 in this term. Yes? Um, I, x squared, x minus 1 is common to x squared and to negative 1. So I factored the x minus 1 out. It's, if, if I had written, let me write down here, if I had x squared times 2 minus um, 3 times 2, right? I could rewrite this as um, 2 times x squared minus 3. Same idea. I'm, I'm saying that here I have 2 and 2. Up here I have x minus 1 and x minus 1. I'm just factoring that out of each term. Okay? What does, what does this tell us now? What can, we, can we figure out our, our intercepts? What's one intercept that we can pick out right away? x equals 1. x equals 1 is one intercept. And this one, we say x squared minus 1 equals 0. So x squared equals 1. And x equals plus or minus 1. So I take the square root of both sides and I get x equals plus or minus 1. So my zeros, or my x-intercepts, are 1 and minus 1. And if I want the point that where, where the, my graph crosses the axis, I would plug 1 and minus 1 in here. So my, my points would be um, 1, 0, and minus 1, 0. And when we get, two, when we get uh, a solution more than once out of a polynomial, 
So here we get, we get x equals 1 from this term, and we get x equals 1 from that term. We say that the, the solution has multiplicity of 2. So we get, it, we get that solution twice. So when you see that term, multiplicity 2, you know that x minus 1, or whatever your, your, your number is, is a factor twice. If it's multiplicity 3, it's a factor 3 times. Multiplicity 4, factor 4 times, and so on. Um, let's look at one more example where we, need to, uh, where we need to do something like this, but this time we want to sketch our function. Any questions on this example before we go on? Okay. This time we're going to sketch our function. So we have f of x, and this will be a little, little easier to, to solve. f of x equals x to the third minus 2x squared. And we want to sketch a graph. So when we sketch a graph, we want to, and we have a polynomial, we're going to do several things. Let's, we're going to find, we're going to look at the end behavior. We're going to look at the zeros. And we're also going to, um, we're going to plot uh, a few points in between the zeros to see what the function does. So for, for, this particular, um, for this particular problem, we're, um, we're not plugging it into our calculator. We want to we describe analytically what is going to happen. So let's look, at our, let's look at our end behavior first. Which, is our high, which term are we looking at for our end behavior? x to the third is going to tell us our end behavior. So um, our exponent is odd. And our coefficient is 1. So it's positive. So what's our end behavior? What is it going to do on the left eventually? Down on the left. And on the right? Up. So we know at the ends on the far right hand side and the far left hand side what our function is going to do. It's going to look like this. It's going to do some other things in between, but it's going to look like this eventually. Let's find our zeros. So our zeros are when f of x equals 0. So we're going to say that x squared, I'm sorry, x to the third minus 2x squared equals 0. So how do we solve this? Yes? Um, why is a sub n positive? Uh, if it's 1, because if it were negative, it would be a minus sign. Oh, okay. if, it's, if there's nothing there, that's, that means it's positive. If it's negative, it would have a minus sign. OK? Um, so we're going to set this equal to 0. How can we solve this? Anybody, anybody have an idea how to solve this? What's our first step, Cedric? Factor out an x squared. So I'm going to write this as x squared times x minus 2 equals 0. So what's one, what's one value of x that gives us 0? x equals 0. And someone else said the other one. What's our other one? x minus 2 is 0, so x equals 2. And x squared equals 0. If I wrote this out, I would say x squared equals 0. So x equals the square root of 0. Our 0 has a multiplicity of 2 because of the squared. Our 0 is going to have a multiplicity of 2. So these are our intercepts. We know our end behavior, and we know our intercepts. So let's start to plot our function. Um, so here's our axes. 
And our, we're sketching a graph, so it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect and beautiful. So we know it's going to cross here at x equals 0. And we know it's going to cross here at x equals 2. We know eventually it's going to go down on the left-hand side. So our, our graph would go down from here. Because if it, if it went up, if it went up here, and we know it has to go down, then it would cross the x-axis again. So we know it has to go down on that side. Yes, yeah, Cedric? No, we're just, we're just sketching. So we're just, we want a rough idea of what it looks like. So we don't have to be precise. We could, plot a we could plot a point over here to know what it looked like. But we just want to know where the, what the function, the general shape of the function. Um, and could it, we know it eventually goes up on the right-hand side. Could it go down from this 0? Cedric says no. Why not? It would eventually, it would eventually have to go back up, and then we'd have another 0. So we know it goes up from here. And we want to know what it does in between these two. So let's, let's our, our last step was plot extra points. So let's plug in x equals 1 into our function. So our function is x cubed minus 2x squared. So 1 cubed is 1 minus 2 times 1 squared. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So in between here, I'm down here at negative 1. So my function is going to look something like that. That would be a rough sketch of that, of that function. Goes down on the left, up on the right, goes through the x-axis at 0 and 2, and we plot in an extra point here in between to get a rough idea of what it looks like. Question? Just All right, any questions on, on this part? So we're finding zeros, we're looking at end behavior, um, and we're translating between different phrases for zero, factor, intercept, solution. OK. Homework. I'll have your quizzes done by Tuesday. Um, our homework is we're on page 130. And there you go.